Yo, what up, dudes? Robbie Rowland here. We're going to break down, uh, wow, I guess this is my second time breaking down Josh. Uh, Josh Samant and Hunter Green, both of them throw 100, both of them absolute studs. Uh, there's, there's a few things in particular that I think is super dope about both of them, and it's not just Josh's beard bun nor Hunter's overall athletic ability. Yikes. I don't know where I'm going with that. All right, let's get it started. So we're starting here on the left with Josh. Um, first thing that I noticed was, you know, he throws 100, which is already hard to hit, but watch how he hides the baseball as well. Okay, so we're going to see sights, right? Hitter, setting sights, looking at the ball. Now watch Josh at hand separation. Where's the ball? Right, So he does an incredible job blocking that view of the ball with his lead leg. My, my pops, who was fortunate enough to play in the big leagues, yeah, he, he brags a few times a day. But uh, he said that one thing that, is a, that he noticed early on was that is if you see, as a hitter, if you see the white of the ball at any point before ball release, it's not necessarily like, oh, I know what pitch is coming but it's that there's some sort of comfort feeling for the hitter. Again, that was his, his thing. I kind of went with it. Makes sense to me. But right off the bat, that's one thing that uh, really jumped out. Like, oh, man, he throws 100 and he hides the ball really well. Now, going over here to the right with Hunter, this is the thing that I noticed that's super freaking, like, this is just crazy. So I've been talking a lot about ankle stability and how the ankle foot can dictate forward momentum because we see a lot of times as kids will learn more about the efficient drive leg mechanics and trying to get into more of a hip hinge that they'll force the issue with their foot and ankle and they'll roll out an eversion and then they'll accomplish a so-called you know like hip hinge but it's more of an unauthentic because you sacrificed ankle and foot posture going away from home plate so kind of you know double negative but again with with hunter is you're going to notice that that ankle rolls inversion right so now we have momentum forward boom but he's able to stabilize that drive leg so that's authentic hip hinging and efficient drive leg mechanics right off the bat i mean that's you now the video quality is a little subpar but that right there is pretty friggin impressive right so now we go back to josh um Again, sights, right? Glove side, good posture with the glove side. On time hand separation, head is staying in the center. Now we're going to come up. Josh doesn't have a super aggressive and noticeable kind of drive leg hip hinge pattern that a lot of high power output throwers do. But we also got to realize that. He's stabilizing that incoming energy from peak leg lift down, and he's increasing forward move, right? So increasing forward and, uh, acceleration by his foot and knee going forward, right? So what else do we see? Lead foot, posture of the lead hip is closed. Now we see sinking up. Okay, okay, let's stop there. Go back to Hunter. Watch Hunter here with hand separation down. It's kind of the same thing, right? I didn't even realize that when I first played this video. Same thing with Hunter is he's, I mean, that lead leg and even the, the back, like his whole body is blocking that ball, right? Making it hard to, to see that, that the pearl, pearl white there. Okay, so hand separation into retraction. This is something that I'm pretty biased about but I never really want to see guys with an aggressive hand going behind now if there was a better angle of Josh I would say that even though he's separating and going and it looks as if it's perceiving going out and swinging up I bet it's just because his his body is moving forward at a pretty dang good acceleration. But again, I could be wrong. I'm not always right, even though I, I might say it. Uh, I don't think that his hand, his ball hand, is going behind the rubber. But again, 
Could be wrong. So down, because I think Verlander does very, very similar, like the same thing with his hand separation. Okay, so down, and then now you're going to notice that elbow goes back. Same thing with Hunter's, that front foot's going to stay closed. Watch how long he stays connected there. Okay, now this is where it gets freaking sick. Because I, sh I talked about this in the last video of Josh. Full front foot contact. This is something that I've been trying to teach, but I've realized that it's not really something you can teach. You can see the whole sole and the bottom of the, that cleat at front foot strike. What is this telling us? It's telling us his hips are freaking going. Now notice where his trunk is, right? So you know how much rotational energy he's building? Or, I mean, it's crazy, right? Like, so now his trunk has essentially delayed or is perceived as delayed, but it's just because his hand, his arm, his hand raised, arm swing at the right time. Same thing with him, right? Boom, comes up, right? So, I, I mean, shoot, look at any high-power output pitcher, and, I mean, comment on this and let me know because I really want to find one that raises their hand, right? So arm swing early in relation to front foot contact and still throws hard. Like, all high-power output pitchers, man, they do an incredible job, even on a slope of delaying hand raise, to accelerate their arm now after front foot strike. So, again, look how much leverage he's creating. That was supposed to go more forward. So, I love drawing this part. That's dope. Same thing here, even though weird angle. All right? You stretch out that band as far as, far as you can, and then now you're just freaking releasing it. So, both do a great job of stabilizing with their lead leg, lead foot, good brace. Look at that direction for Josh. I mean, no wasted direction, right? Front side posture holds. Now, both of them, like I said, do a great job of stabilizing that lead leg, lead foot, sturdy into the ground. Um, again, I know it's not a side view of, of Josh. I can't really tell what, the, what his trail leg's doing, but both of them look like they relatively have a longer trail leg, means they've efficiently transferred energy before touching back down to the ground. And now both have a lightning fastball. Dotted. Dotted. <laughs> so much, that's the one thing that sticks out to me with both of them is there's obviously all the things that I mentioned before this video or during this video, but when I slow it down, like leverage, right? So boom, and now wham, wham. Same with Josh. Wham, wham. Both of them efficient arm actions too, man. You get into the you get into the proper spots, right, with that hand, and again, it's not necessarily about teaching which positions, quote unquote, to get into, kind of just a natural flow. I mean, this delivery's happening in what, one second, two seconds? But it's like, they've delayed their hand, they've rotated on time, their hips are rotated. So now when they land, the arm is now able to pull, pull through the zone. Instead, I think with, with a lot of guys that try to throw at high power output, but their hand is, is relatively early, that's when you get into more of a push because the trunk is prematurely rotating um, with because the hands come up early. Cool. Good stuff. Well, that'll do it for me. If you ever want to see more of my stuff, I'm pretty much everywhere. I still think I have a MySpace account too, if you want to check that out. No idea the password, but I wish I did because there's probably some gold on there. And we'll sign it. See you guys.